so nice to have your company, though, here as we start up another edition, a special edition of Here and There as we stream live. Um, you know, be crazy. The fact that we've had over 4,000 cases today uh, in Ontario. And I'm pleased that we've had a number of viewers who've connected with me and said, can't watch the show live because I have my appointment to get my vaccine, which is just awesome. Do da uh, cheering you on with that. So you can watch the replay, of course. Um, but that's what it's all about is getting that the vaccination. And slowly now, I think we're starting to pick up gears. So that is terrific. So nice, by the way, to see so many people waiting in the green room, as I like to call it, as we start up uh, episode six here of Here and There. And uh, we're going to have some fun. You know, it is such a challenging time. So I know we can't uh, go do our regular tour adventures yet. We're going to assess this as the weeks go on. But we're we're still going to have a lot of fun. We're still going to connect. And this is what it's about, keeping uh, each other company, taking care of one another, and hopefully put a smile on your face, sharing some laughs. Uh, We'll do that, I promise. Well, already we have Alicia joining us from South Ajax, Carol, Rita, Lois, uh, Peggy, uh, Murray, Judy, Sheila. Uh, Oh, and Sheila just says she just came back from her vaccine. My face hurts from smiling so much. Now, that's a good thing, isn't it? Well, good for you. Diana is joining us. Also, Sheldon, uh, Kathy and Linda and Barb, uh, Cindy from Oshawa. So it is uh, not as bright today, although uh, the rain has moved out. We'll have your full forecast. And now when I say move out, it doesn't mean that it's over. We're going to see another band of rain showers. But it's still a decent uh, forecast. So our temperatures are, are relatively uh, mild, in fact, above seasonal. Um, but I want to start off with what is today officially. Today, Friday, April 9th, is Cherish an Antique Day. Now, that doesn't mean necessarily this is about, you know, having an expensive valuable per se. It's about encouraging people to maybe find that, uh, the, the story behind that rare item that you have. Maybe it's tucked away in a box in the garage or in the attic or in the basement. Maybe it's sitting on a shelf. So I thought the AKQ today would be just that. What cool antique do you have? And again, it's not about the money value. It'd be kind of nice if you have something that's valuable, but more about the story. And obviously we won't have time to break down the complete story of everything, but let me know on the Anwar Knight query, what antique do you have um, and, 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 and cherish, uh, you know, and you can just sort of maybe la- list it, you know, whether it's a grandfather clock and you've had it for 100 years in terms of in the family, that sort of thing. Um, and I'll be curious. So today's officially Cherish an Antique Day. Now, you could probably see on my right uh, the milk can uh, there, your left, my right. And that is actually a very rare collectible. Uh, not that it's worth a lot. It's probably worth more maybe in scrap metal. Uh, I'm probably insulting my in-laws with that. But that is my wife's grandfather's. He was a dairy farmer. Uh, outside of the Stratford area. So I got some notes on it. Uh, on, on those uh, milk cans, there'd be a little red mark. And that would be sort of the, the license or the commission when he would get paid. So uh, he was a, a dairy farmer and he would fill up his milk can and then go through uh, a couple of other farmers, probably about five or six. He'd collect their cans a day and then he would go uh, to the dairy, Borden Dairy at the time, which was located in Hickson, Ontario. They're the ones that would process it. Uh, so it's just really a, a neat story behind it. And today, uh, Borden is a part of Silverwood Dairy. Um, but that was used in the 1930s. So it's, it's over a century, uh, give or take. We're trying to, trying to get the exact date when it was manufactured. But just kind of a neat story. And we use that uh, for decoration. And, you know, the other thing we have is this. This little tea cap. Now, you know what I find interesting? All the stuff that I collect or I think is somewhat antique, my wife calls junk, but her stuff is all valuable. Uh, and it, the truth be told, this one, it probably is valuable. Uh, and that's just the way it goes. But this is kind of neat because this is also over 100 years old. And we're asking about your antiques, and we've had a lot of people here. Stephanie says, for a wedding, we were given a tea cap from 1657, and it happened to be painted by F. Wheatley, and my maiden name is Wheatley. And the people who gave it to us had no clue. Well, that's kind of cool. Uh, that's a great story. And that's what I think this is it's all about. Cherries uh, and Antique Day. Uh, the little stories behind that. Um, and Rita's saying, we're seeing you. Very good. Uh, Linda's saying, yeah, you have to love technology. No kidding. But in cool, the fact that we can all connect, even with a stay-at-home order, and still have some fun. So this is all good. Uh, so that's the question for today. Now, in the meantime, 
you know, I wanted to talk about pandemic shortages. We all remember the toilet paper frenzy, right? Uh, you know, whether it was uh, at Walmart and Costco, uh, you, you know, you're standing in line. Everybody was buying every single uh, roll of toilet paper they can get their hands on. I know some people actually had to resort to buying it on Amazon. So for now, it looks like the toilet paper is not an issue. But the, uh, the, the pandemic has actually started up a new wave of shortages. And I think this may surprise you of what the item is. I, I, I don't understand it, but apparently it's ketchup. Now, we're not talking about big bottles of ketchup. We're talking about those little packets of ketchup. And this is primarily in the U.S. And it's because, of course, restaurants during the lockdowns, they became takeout kings. And it was the only way, and that, of course, applies here in many parts of Canada, especially in southern, southern Ontario, is that you had to, uh, you know, offer your services through takeout. Uh, and whatever, oh, it does, oh, does that burger look good? <laughs> I could go for a burger and fries right now. I don't think there's much service here. Uh, but the reason is, you know, they offered the ketchup for people who are doing a takeout. So there's a big shortage of it. And, uh, you know, there were 300,000 tons of ketchup that were sold to restaurants in 2020 as the pandemic started. And they can't get enough of it. Uh, Heinz, the big name, the big brand, is apparently uh, is suffering from the biggest shortage because I guess everybody buys that. Packet prices, so for restaurants who are ordering, has gone up by 13%. I mean, that's significant. In fact, uh, significant. In fact, so much so that Kraft, um, in terms of their manufacturing and producing it, they've added another manufacturing line. So on one hand, that's good for employment, but they're increasing their production by 25% because there's not enough ketchup. Can you imagine? And they are going to make more than 12 billion packets of ketchup. <laughs> Who's eating this ketchup? You know, I'll tell you, the last thing I'm going to do is use ketchup from a restaurant only because it's something that hands touch the packets. Yes, you could watch it, but I, I'm, I'm really anal that way, very much of a germaphobe. So I'm not using ketchup, uh, certainly the packets, because it's just it's an invite for hands to touch it. But I know a lot of people appreciate it. And I'm saying certainly appreciate and support your local restaurants. I just won't do the ketchup sort of thing. But I thought that was really interesting is that the pandemic is now pushing a shortage on ketchup packets, but not the only thing. Um, so uh, Narita is saying, nice to see you and hear you again. Uh, keep up the good work and take care of your family. Glad that uh, to hear you had the vaccine. I have not had mine, um, but we are talking to people who did have it. And uh, Marilyn uh, answering the AKQ, by the way, I have the scale that my grandmother used to weigh babies. She was a midwife. Now, that's a cool story. Uh, that's a very cool, cool, cool story. Here's another thing when it comes to pandemic shortages. Bicycles. I'm not sure if you got yourself uh, a bike, if you've been riding more, but we can understand the connection why. There is a worldwide shortage of bicycles. Uh, new bikes, parts, and accessories. So if you're thinking of doing some cycling now that we're getting into summer, if you see a bike, get it, grab it, because the odds of you trying to get it, uh, you know, in the weeks pushing forward, it's not going to happen. And this is not only, you know, in other parts of the world, in the U.S. and Europe and that sort of thing, but right here in southern Ontario, uh, there is a shortage. Uh, and there's quite a few retailers that are saying that, especially the large mountain bikes and off-road bikes apparently are the most difficult to get. Now, some of these bikes, you know, are one to two thousand um, dollars. So, you know, it's not like it's a cheap uh, accessory. But a lot of people have gravitated to the outdoors, which is a great thing. And as a result, bike shops um, there, there's a real shortage. In part because normally the inventory that they would get for this season, it's falling back to about half of what they normally get. Uh, one shop in Cambridge, this was a story out of CBC, the owner says the surge in demand will likely take a couple of years to catch up on. I, I tied it in, didn't I, ketchup? <laughs> but isn't that something? So ketchup packets and bicycles, big pandemic push on shortages. Uh, back to the AKQ, Diane says, I have a cabinet from the 30s full of 78 records uh, that was uh, my grandparents, plus many antique treasures. Um, I tell him I don't need any condiments or utensils. Sheila is saying, 
and then I use my own stuff. Yeah, that's that's sort of what I do. Some people just like the convenience. Um, Donna's saying, oh, my yard is gorgeous. Oh, you're very kind. You're very kind. Thank you for that. Sandra says it'll take six, six years for you to get through those four bottles. Um, it's the packets in the U.S., not the ketchup itself. We're fine here in Canada. Well, Sandra, I'm going to trust that you are the official ketchup expert. Uh, and she's referring to another uh, viewer who said, Jonathan said uh, that bought four bottles of ketchup just to be safe. So, <laughs> well, you know what, John? Maybe you want to put that on eBay. I don't know. And, uh, yeah, Ron pointed out, too, that the packets are not biodegradable. That's true. And there are many spinoffs on the fact of we're using more plastics and that sort of thing because of the pandemic, which are having an impact on the environment. But I, I, at this point, I don't know. We have to be realistic, I guess, in prioritizing. But it is something that we need to look at without question. And I know there are some manufacturers now trying to look at that in terms of making things that are more biodegradable. Uh, let's see here. We'll continue. And David is saying we only use ketchup from the bottle because of COVID. It could be on the foil packages, hands are being on. Exactly my point. That's why I won't use those. And, um, oh, Helen says Christmas decorations from the 1940s, some glass ones. Now, that's really cool. You have to be careful if the grandkids or the kids play with them. But uh, that's kind of neat. Um yeah, Stephanie's saying maybe they didn't put them in when you don't want them. Yeah, that's a good idea. Maybe you tell uh, a local retailer, restaurant, if you're, if you're going to make a, an order to say, you know what, I'm okay, you can keep the ketchup. But that's a great idea. I think on many fronts, also with the utensils and that sort of thing, uh, so you can certainly do that. Uh, Jennifer says, we have my maternal grandparents' dining room table. I don't know uh, when they got it, but they were married in 1924, and they, you've had it over 40 years. It has weathered. Uh, but my two kids now are granddaughters. But you see, each mark, each dent is a part of the history and the story. That's what I think is very cool. Uh, Judy says the biggest pandemic shortage was and is patience. Yeah, no kidding. Um, but we got we to, gotta, you know, grit our teeth and get through this. And I know it's trying. And that's why I'm, I'm thinking, that's why I'm doing this show. I said, we got to keep this going. Uh, even if we're at stay-at-home orders, because this breaks up the routine and we can still learn uh, amongst each other uh, and that sort of thing. So I think that's that's the, the coolest thing. Hold on here. I just want to scroll back. Um, Stephanie says, for our wedding, we were given a teacup from 1657. What? Come on. They weren't drinking tea back then, were they? Uh, that's amazing. Oh, that was F. Wheatley. That's right. That's 1657. Are you sure about that date? That is incredible. Holy smokes. Um also, I want to get to the forecast before we get to the next thing I wanted to talk about. So uh, let me start off with showing you the national map because we do have another band of rain that's going to move in. And by the way, if you were a sponsor of the show, uh, we could be reading your sponsorship right now that the weather's brought to you by. So just so you know, uh, we are looking for sponsors if we continue to grow this. But I want to start off with your forecast, looking at the national forecast map. So there are actually two bands of moisture that are going to move in. So the initial band moved in this morning, and, and we had a couple of hours here, but certainly some other areas, four or five hours of some light rain. Uh, there's a much more intense uh, energy down to the deep, deep south. But you can see the secondary band, and that actually is starting to push in uh, west to east, increasing our cloud as we speak right now, and it will uh, generate some rain showers. So I'll show you the radar signatures. I don't think we're going to see anything heavy at this point. But I do think there is a risk of also uh, seeing some thunderstorms. So as we look at the radar signature, and especially across portions of Lake Huron, there's some lake breeze convergence zones. So that'll add to the uplift, uh, updrafting of some of these cells. And there may be some embedded thunderstorms. But you can see overall that we don't have a lot of moisture unless you have a thunderstorm. And you can see it's sort of lifting up. So west moving to the uh, northeast, uh, some of this energy. So there will be dry, uh, dry time excuse me, in between all that, which is certainly uh, good news if you want to take the dog out for a quick pee run or even just take the kids out and that sort of thing um, you know, after school. But I suspect uh, we will get some rain showers in around the GTA probably in the next two hours or so another round, but nothing intense. So we'll put it all together now. Look at your forecast for the Toronto area. We're going to see certainly sunny, a few sunny breaks, and we've seen that. Now the cloud is starting to build back in, and we're going to list it as scattered showers. Remaining mild, though, 
uh, 18 degrees. Now with the cloud, it'll drop it down again. Um, the norm though, we should be at around 11 degrees. So as we put it all together and look at your actual forecast for Toronto, uh, the winds will be from the Southeast 15 uh, kilometers an hour. And then to the overnight, I'm forecasting certainly uh, some breaks in the cloud, 11 degrees, sunset time, 7.53. And, you know, again, we should be down close to freezing, around one degree for an overnight low, one or two. So this is well above where we are normally. And then as we get into the rest of southern Ontario, variable cloudiness. Again, certainly some areas still seeing some sunny uh, breaks. There will be scattered showers and the risk of thunderstorms. Uh, the winds will pick up as well, 30 to 60 kilometers an hour, but the temperature is 14 to 21 degrees. I would not be surprised if we don't break. We may, we may tie a, a record or so, especially in parts of southern Ontario to the southwest, getting close, you know, 20, 21 degrees. And then as we get into the uh, evening, a risk of some thunderstorms again, lake breeze convergence in particular, hugging along Lake Huron. Uh, we can expect uh, a few of those, but 7 to 12 degrees for overnight lows. Uh, Halib in Halliburton, I mean, that'll be, you know, 9 degrees warmer than you should be for the overnight. So the seven-day trend, uh, it's going to be a beautiful start to the weekend, guys. Uh, I know we have the stay-at-home orders, but... You are allowed to head outside to your local park, your local ravine, get some fresh air, take the kids out. I'm telling you, it's going to feel like very early summer as we push into Saturday. Temperatures will be fantastic uh, into the low 20s in many areas. So you'll get some clearing, and then the clouds will start to push in again for the afternoon as we get the secondary system. And this will be a widespread rain event. Uh, it looks like late Saturday, certainly the overnight into Sunday, but 21 degrees, 16 on Sunday. Uh, rain showers, you know, if you have your fertilizer or grass seed, definitely uh, do that, if not later today, uh, tomorrow, and get set for nature to take uh, care of the watering for you. Still some scattered showers on Monday, uh, 15 degrees, and a risk of a shower on Tuesday. But you can see the trend a little bit cooler next week for uh, officially the spring break. It has been delayed for the kids. It's going to be a little cooler. You know, nothing that's going to be cold, but we're not going to be into the upper teens and low 20s, more like the... Uh, the mid-teens. But overall, no complaints, dropping down to four degrees on Tuesday. So as we continue uh, with the AKQ, uh, somebody's saying here uh, do, 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 that uh, Dina is saying, I have a gas mask that my mother had when she was evacuated to Cornwall during the war. She's watching the show with me. So a call out to Edna Rogers. Well, Edna, that is very cool. You know, maybe uh, down the road, we should ask for some pictures from some of you guys. Like, that's just really cool, the history and the story about it. Uh, it was certainly scary times when you needed that gas mask, but that's just fascinating. And uh, Wally says his grandfather was a milkman delivered via horse and buggy. See, that's neat. That's very neat. Allison says, I have an only whiskey bottle in my garden. Uh, was it full pre-pandemic? <laughs> when you say old, are you saying, you know, just a year old? I think some people may have a collection in the garden of uh, beverages of sociable nature, you know, bottles inside their garden. And Stephanie says the date is on the bottle. That's cool. And Madeline said left everything in Scotland. So not many antiques, but I do have a teddy bear that's over 70 years old. You know, my brother used to have one and sadly we threw it out. And now that I think about it, you know, back then you think, oh, as you're moving with your parents and your family, that's just junk. But yeah, it would have been cool to keep that. Uh, because it was, uh, you know, a signature bear, as, as I recall, uh, my mother telling me. Uh, Annie says, hello from Bowmanville. Hello, Annie. Thanks for joining us. And Pat says, we have my husband's World War I medals, and one was the Distinguished, distinguished Medal. Well, that's fantastic. Um, uh, Vicky says, uh, I have my mom. <laughs> Vicky says her antique, she has her mom. She's going to be 88. <laughs> And she's going to slap her. Yeah, good for you. Uh, Ward is saying we need rain. And you know, you're right. We do need some rain. Uh, I've done the, the lawn seed over the last few weeks. And I've actually had to do it myself just with the watering can. We do need some moisture at this point. Bonnie says, hey, thanks for being upbeat. It's helping to encourage me with yet another lockdown. Yeah, I know. It's hard. It's really hard. And I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, it's been challenging for us as well. And I consider myself an extremely blessed man. We have two young kids who'll be doing online schooling. We're all healthy. Um, 
but it is hard. It is very hard. So that's why we need to take care of one another. Uh, Michelle says she has a rolling pin and a variety of cookbooks dating back to the 1930s that she got from her mom. That would be kind of neat. You should go through the actual recipes and, and just sort of see. I know for my in-laws, my mother-in-law, she actually took the time to make a, a recipe book from, you know, their generation of long-standing recipes and then presented it uh, to some of the kids in the family. And my wife got one. Even to this day, my wife will make some stuff. Um, okay, so Sarah says she's got to get going, but thanks for making this day at home order more enjoyable. You are awesome. Sarah, thank you for your company. Appreciate it. I know some people have work to do and that sort of thing. Uh, we'll go for probably another uh, five or seven minutes or so. But thank you, Sarah. Have a great weekend. Appreciate it. Please, uh, you know, show me a thumbs up and share the link so more and more people can join us. And Ward said, adding to his comment about the fires, that they had three forest fires burning in the far northwest of the province. And that is going to be a serious uh, concern in terms of wildfires. You're absolutely right about that. Um, yeah, Judy says, thanks for the forecast. The weekend is all set. Yeah, tomorrow certainly will be. And Mark says, I have a full-size Wayne Model 90 Texaco gas pump from the 1950s in your living room. What? Now, obviously, it is, it's been designed to remain indoors, but that's kind of cool. See, maybe I should ask for photos. That is kind of cool. And I bet you it's worth something, too, from the, uh, you know, the 1950s. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised even if movie sets uh, and movie companies would like to, to do something with that. Uh, also, Rose says... I can feel the pressure, another headache coming on. You know, that's very true. A lot of people, they've proven that. You can feel when uh, low pressure moves in. Hola, Anwar. Hello and happy Friday to, I hope I'm pronouncing you right, uh, Mariah. Good to have you. Thank you so much. Um, Christmas bubble lights and lights with small shades with eczema scenes that turn when the light gets warm. Also a beautiful old smoke stand made for my grandfather. A smoke stand. I'm sorry, I don't know what that is. Uh, let me know, Linda, but that sounds very cool. And um, Barbara is saying, enjoying the noon weather forecast. Yeah, just so you know, when we go out on location, originally we want to include the forecast. We're just working on the technology so we're able to show the graphics without uh, affecting our video quality. So that is the ultimate goal. We're getting very close, by the way. I'm really excited about that. Uh, Phyllis says, Loves, I love the show from Oshawa. Yay, thanks for doing that. No walking with my golden for a while, undergoing TPLO surgery as I write this. At least the good weather's here for, uh, for a rehab. Oh, so the dog had some surgery. Well, you know, MJ, uh, Mestre Mateo, yeah, just let them rest. That's the best thing. Um, Val says, have an old iron that had to be put on a cold stove to be he heat up. That's very cool. That's re really neat. Um, Diane says, good to see you. Jan is joining us from Oshawa. Love your show. Please stay safe to you and your family. Thank you very much. We are doing our best, I'll tell you. And, um, and also, Jennifer saying this format is your strength. I uh, also enjoy uh, participating. Well, thank you, Jennifer. I really hope that you know, we'll continue to grow this. And I have to let you know, when we talk about uh, the interactions, the hearts, and, and, and sharing it, um, it's not just because it's cool to, to see that from you, but in terms of Facebook, the more interactions that the live streams get, they also start to share it. Uh, and that's ultimately how we're going to grow this and get sponsors. So I do really appreciate that. And Diana says she's watching with her granddaughter. What's your granddaughter's name? Uh, Diane, let me know. And uh, also Ranja says, uh, my dad has the original Indian scriptures, which is 1200, 200 BC. What? Now that is very cool. Very cool. And I would imagine uh, quite sentimental. It has some very uh, intense meaning for you and your family. Sammy's saying hello from Whitby. Uh, one never throws out a teddy bear. Now you're making me feel bad. You're right. We have enough stuffies upstairs now, though. Diane says you're the voice of calm. Thank you. Uh, also, Sheila says, if you ever talk to Tom Brown, let him know he is missed. Yeah, I'm going to try to connect with Tom. Also says, uh, love your backyard. I'd love to have something similar to that. Recommendations. Well, maybe we'll do a show on that. Thank you for that. Uh, also, um, Pat says your show is another reason to look forward to Fridays. Well, thank you for that. Before we continue, uh, I want to uh, sh tell you about one more little story we were teasing in our promo. And this is also uh, pandemic-induced. It's Lego. Who has Lego at home? Now, I think I've mentioned this before. I have tons of Lego. My boys. And it's, it's the greatest toy on earth. I remember as a kid playing with Lego. Um, besides me stepping on it in the middle of the night. But 
this is interesting that it's not just for kids. Lego sales have soared through the pandemic. And the fastest growth in five years was for adults buying Lego pieces. And those are, are, are really some of the rare ones. When I say rare, they're some limited edition. But the problem is they've, they've started to crack an international theft ring uh, for Lego sets. And this is in France, the France police, the French police. Uh, they've connected it with in France and also Poland and also in the U.S., so apparently these gangsters, yeah, that's what we need. We need the Lego police to put them in jail. Uh, they're going into Lego stores and they're trying to steal some of the valuable sets. And, and one, for example, was the Star Wars Millennium Falcon, which typically goes for about a thousand bucks. It's 7,500 pieces, but it's been sold on the, the black market or brick market, as they say, for 3,700 bucks. So they are now warning parents to be on the lookout if you go to Lego stores. I mean, right now we can't do that, obviously. But with your kids, that there might be people, you know, trying to scope out and maybe some theft occurring. I thought it was really quite something. Uh, the fact that, you know, it just shows you the way some people react uh, when we're in challenging times. That people are starting to steal uh, Lego sets, which is uh, pretty crazy. But it is what it is. But if you happen to have Lego and you have kids or grandkids, man, it's such an amazing toy. They can just build for hours, especially like a day like today when we're getting some rain showers and that sort of uh, thing. You know, they can make it into a new toy all the time. Um, very quickly, before we wrap up, Michelle Whaley says, I have a book, The World's Book of Knowledge, published in 1901. That's kind of neat. Uh, JP Wright says, I have an old school desk with old and old pay phones. Oh, those are so cool, pay phones. We bought a retro version uh, when we remodeled our kitchen, and it just, it's really cool. It's, it's not as neat as an original, of course, because it's all plastic, but it looks kind of neat. Um, uh, gracias, Anwar. You're the vitamin in my lunch. <laughs> Don't overdose, okay? <laughs> That's cool. Uh, Lena is saying good afternoon. Enjoy listening to you. Thank you so much. Uh, Diane, it's good to connect with you. Vern is joining us. Uh, he says he's a, an antique. Vern joins us on the show. He's part of the crew, uh, which are obviously now there's no crew because we're doing uh, close to home. But um, Ron says, I have my father's Webster's Dictionary, 3,500 pages. That's interesting because they update the dictionary, Ron. You know, every year they, they put on some new uh, words. Uh, you know, in fact, one of the, what was it? Googleism? I forget now, and I had that. I made a note of it. If you forget what you're about to, to Google, uh, so they updated. Uh, Chris is saying, been spreading the word about your show. Keep up the great work. It all helps with our current lockdown. Um, although I personally like being locked down <laughs> from Colbert. Each to their own, Chris. But as long as you're smiling, then I'm all good. Um, Cindy says, I have my late father's fireman jacket and boots from being a volunteer school guard township for 35 years. That's very neat. Um, Giselle says, uh, love your setting today. Thank you. Well, this is going to be the set for the next few weeks anyway. Uh, Inez says, I have my grandmother's Bible from the 1800s. So you see, there's so many people that are cherishing uh, a variety of, of what they call antiques or rare items in their home. Uh, Shelly's saying, I have bins and bins of Lego. No kidding. No kidding. Uh, Stephanie says, trying to send you uh, photos of my teacup. Also, Barb says, great to see you. Can I ask, is that flower pot and stand an old, uh, an old potty chair? Uh, oh, uh, yes, this is um, an old potty chair. No, it's not. Uh, this was actually given as a gift recently that was sent to us, and I just thought it was so cool. I want to actually make some more of these, maybe slightly bigger for the front of the house. Isn't it adorable, though? Oh, yeah, it's amazing. Uh, also, um, okay, Liz says, my retired firefighter husband, Ian, has been given firefighter Legos. And my sister-in-law keeps finding them. Well, that's kind of neat. Uh, and they've really branched out. When Lego used to be just, you know, there was maybe four or five different types of bricks. And now it's completely uh, gone on to so many different levels. Uh, JP says, I was one of the curlers in the Calgary bubble, was building giant Lego models. That's cool. Uh, Marina bought Lego for my grandson. Tammy says, hello from Scarborough. Hi, Tammy. I know you're a longtime supporter. Thank you. And Diane says, I wish I could have kept my son's Legos. Yeah, me too. I wish I would have kept mine. That would have been worth something. And I got to tell you, if we don't get sponsors or I don't get a full-time gig. I'm going to be selling my wife's teacup. <laughs> oh, my mother-in-law's not watching. Um, 
And then Ranja adds that my dad has uh, antique folk art collections, some original paintings and books. So our living room is a museum. That's very cool. Okay, guys, we're going to uh, slowly wrap up here because we're getting a little late. I know uh, people have things to do. Uh, we want to thank all of you. Donna says a wood sled from the 1920s. Oh, that is amazing. And um, I want to say, listen, thank you so much. This has been a lot of fun. Please, again, show me thumbs up, some hearts, share the link. And very quickly, I'm going to let you know how you can connect with me on all the different platforms. So, of course, we do this, which is the live stream on Facebook. I have the uh, podcast uh, called The Big Blue Marble, and uh, you can get that at BigBlueMarble.Earth. We're working on another uh, episode. We're going to be highlighting the Climate Grannies, a team of, of, of grandmothers that are working together to you know, help the climate uh, around the world. So that is another uh, avenue. Of course, the live stream every Friday at noon at Animal Night TV, where you're watching this right now. And also on my YouTube channel. So we re, re rack this. You can see the replay on Facebook as well on my YouTube channel. I have a number of different things there, including uh, the blue files. So if you get down there, uh, please subscribe and also like, send me comments. I try to respond to everybody. And of course, I'm on Instagram and Twitter at Anwar Knight. And I always try to uh, you know promote the show. So when you retweet or share a post, that all helps us grow. So my friends, thank you. It is a true blessing to have your company. Uh, it certainly makes my Friday better. It puts a smile on my face, and I hope it does the same for you. Have yourself a very safe and happy weekend. If you're scheduled for vaccination, yay! Uh, make sure you, you get to your appointment on time, and uh, we'll reconnect next Friday on another edition of Here and There, streaming live every Friday at noon. I'm Anwar Knight. Take care, guys, and we'll see you next week. Bye for now.